A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a power in love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Jesus Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed, and I am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Verbum Domini. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. As the eyes of a maid are on the eyes of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. Dominus Vobiscum. Et cum Spiritus Tuo. Lexio Sancti Vengeli Secundum Marcum. Gloria a Ti, Domine. 
Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the women also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled? Because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. Verbum Domini. Fear, discouragement, self-pity are all things that will slow down our progress in the spiritual life. In addition to that, that will hinder us from glorifying God through evangelizing or proclaiming his word. Now, and this may happen to us. Perhaps we may be, have a little disappointment, or the way in, the, in, in whatever we're involved in may not be working out as we thought it would be. So we may be tempted to discouragement. Now we uh, may have had a, 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 sort of a, a heartbreak in our work of evangelizing. Now and this, this, you know, what, what happens is naturally you feel ashamed. You know, or you feel like you failed. Well, in today's first reading, you know, Timothy is facing a lot of these same sentiments. Discouragement, you know, self-pity, fear. You know, however, St. Paul has some very inspiring and enlightening words for him and all of us. At the same time today, we are celebrating the memorial of a great saint, St. Boniface, bishop and martyr, who was filled with zeal, who they call the apostle of Germany, and who never let things like discouragement, fear, or self-pity stop him from doing the will of God. So here at, at this, um, in this first reading, uh, now Timothy, has witnessed some, some, some very severe sufferings uh, and hardships of St. Paul. As we know of Paul, you know, he was, he was apprehended many times. He was beating, beaten several, on several occasions, you know, and imprisoned and treated very cruelly. However, Paul, St. Paul was unstoppable. And, but yet, at the appearance of that, you know, Timothy, who's his good friend, and Paul uh, regards him as a son, and, you know, Timothy sees St. Paul as, as a father, you know, is, is, is kind of frightened by, by all that, that he has to, that, that all Paul has endured, and naturally so. You know, he's a human being. We all are human beings, and, you know, at, at, the, at the knowledge of, of possible potential suffering, 
You know, uh, it, it can be quite scary. So here is sort of Timothy kind of shrinking up a little bit. You know, he doesn't want to uh, endure the punishments St. Paul did. So Paul now encourages him. And he begins with speaking about the promise, the promises of God. He tells us right here for he says that Paul himself say, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God for the promise of the life in Christ Jesus. So here, St. Paul acknowledging that he has been blessed with life in Christ Jesus through the graces of the sacraments. That has given and has, he has, that, is, that has been given to him. He has been inherited these things and he receives them and he knows the promises and he trusts in the power of God's grace. So he, he can be confident in going forward because he knows that whatever he faces, whatever he's to endure, whether, whether good or not so good, he knows that Jesus Christ is with him and Jesus Christ has gone before him. So his eyes are on Jesus the Lord. How did Jesus endure this? How did Jesus go through suffering? How was Jesus in prison? How was Jesus mocked and ridiculed and accused? What did he do? And Paul looks to that. And in looking to that, there he is. He has the answer. He knows how to act because Jesus already did it. So he has confidence in the promises of God. The words of the Lord. And, of course, you know, even with all this suffering, Paul expresses his gratitude. You know, he's always grateful to God. He's always sort of in a state of prayer. You know, Paul tells us in another place, he says, pray without ceasing. You know, that means that, that here he is, he always has this connection with the Lord. He's always thinking about him. You know, his gaze is on him, just like Jesus Jesus was always gazed on the Father. Jesus is always speaking about the Father and doing the will of the Father, that he's here, that he loves the Father, the Father loves him. And he's walking in that kind of confidence, and so is St. Paul. And St. Paul is grateful for the presence of God in his life. See, this helps him forward. Gratitude. Gratitude is so powerful. And then, so, so now knowing that, okay, here is, um, is Timothy feeling a little timid. So Paul says, you know, he reminds him to stir into flame, you know, the, the, what the Holy Spirit has given to him, you know, by the imposition of hands. Now, he's talking about his ordination, you know, they, we, we put hands on there, on, on, uh, they put hands on us, you know, they anoint our hands, you know, and um, he's talking about his ordination, the grace of ordination, and like we, we okay, because most of us watching are, are not ordained uh, ministers, you know. Um, but we do have the grace in us. I mean, it wasn't by hands, but we were baptized with the baptism of Jesus, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We were confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And in being confirmed by the Holy Spirit, we were confirmed so that we may have the grace to live the adult life and the ministerial life of Jesus, to, to, uh, to, to live his public life in doing good works, works of charity and prayer, you know, and imitating him. So th this was the grace that has been given to us as lay people. So this is what, like Paul is saying, you got to stir into flame. You know, what has been given you by the imposition of hands? Well, some of us have to stir into flame what has been given to us by the Holy Spirit, through the grace of baptism, through the grace of confirmation, through the reception of the body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And even, even the grace that we receive in the sacrament of penance when we fall short, because there, there we go down with Jesus. There we go. Here is Jesus there, who is, who, 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 uh, like, like, the, like the sacrifice of the Mass, the, uh, in an unbloody manner, the, 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 
His, his life, death, and resurrection is made, is made present to us. You know, the, the cross right there, the sacrifice of Jesus made present in and bloody matter and all the sacraments, the sacrament of confession. So there, the blood of Jesus is on us and, and we are forgiven, absolved of our sins. And then we have the grace of resurrection to come out of the confessional. No, that's power right there. And that's what we, get, what we need to have, be mindful of in going forward in the Lord, that he's risen us up again. He's picked us up with the power of his grace, with the power of the resurrection. Okay. So this is what we want to always be mindful of, to stir into flame. And then, God, and then, then now St. Paul gives them some very profound words. For God did not give you a spirit of cowardice, but rather a power, love, and self-control. See, when, when, when we are are confronted with this temptation to become discouraged or to, uh, you know, sort of get self-absorbed and feel sorry for ourselves, or when we are afraid, you know, we, we, kind of, we lose control. You know, we kind of succumb to cowardice, to fear. You know, and then we, we just, we, we, we are very limited. And sometimes we, we're been halted. You know, there we are stuck. No, and, and, and so this is, this is what, what fear does, is it, is, it, is it paralyzes us. It brings us down. No, same with, with discouragement. Same with, with, uh, with self-pity. It doesn't do anything. It's a waste of time. So Paul, um, Paul, uh, and Paul reminds Timothy, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Okay, so uh, we're losing control over ourselves. Remember the power and love of God. This, this gives, keeps, gets us back into control of self, gets us back on the right road here. The power of God, the love of God. See, this is what, 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 what Jesus, this is what, what, what made him go forward in his sufferings and the agony Embracing the cross is his love for the Father and his love for us. Same with St. Paul. In facing all these sufferings, how did, he, how did he go a step forward? His love for the Lord. He says, I love the Lord. I mean, sometimes, you know, some of these early, early martyrs and, and, and saints and even the, the, the more recent ones, they're scared to, to go uh, to, 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 to suffer or to, you know, to face death through martyrdom. No, but they, they walk forward. You know, they, they move trusting in God, trusting in his promise that he will provide the graces necessary at the time they need them. And God does. He always does. You know, there's always also the fear. And, and one thing that the commentary said is that, you know, uh, that, that Timothy was fear, facing the fear of, of, of shame. So, well, what if I fail? Well, you fail. You learn something. You know, I mean, like, okay, you get back up and do something else, or you start over again. No, you have, we need to have this determination. This determination, this love for the kingdom of God. So, so yeah, we, we fall short, we get back up, and we work harder at it. Yeah, we learn from it. Or maybe it, it, God has some other door for us. So then we go through that, you know, in time. But we continue our prayer. Are, are looking to the Lord. And a great example of, of, of somebody who, who walks in this kind of power of God and love of the Lord is St. Boniface. Now, St. Boniface, you know, he was uh, born in, in the 7th century. Uh, he was a, a, a really good student. Uh, you know, he gave himself to studies and things, and uh, eventually he uh, became, became a monk, was ordained a priest around the age of 30, and, you know, spent most of the, the 700s, you know, uh, doing works of evangelization and uh, missionary work. You know, he founded many monasteries. You know, uh, uh, St. Uh, Gregory the, the Second uh, made him a bishop, archbishop. You know, he was entrusted with much. You know, and he, in, in, in going to, in mission, missionizing, uh, 
in Northern Europe, especially Germany, you know, going through, through many of the pagan uh, villages and towns and, and preaching the gospel. He, he really didn't have much fear. Like, he, he just went. You know, he just did it. You know, and, and there he goes. He, many were converted uh, because of him. You know, there was a, a story here where there was a, a sort of a tribe of people who, who worshipped a, a, a big tree. You know, they thought, they thought of it as a god. You know, this is, there's, this god, there's a, our god right here, this tree. And they worshipped it, you know, giving adoration to it. Well, he came with an axe and chopped it down. And then, you know, uh, uh, then, the, then all the people stood in awe. They says, wow. And they realized that their god was powerless, that this was not a real god. And so they, you know, turning to Boniface now for help. So eventually, you know, he, he was captured. He was killed for, for preaching the gospel, spreading the faith, you know. And, uh, you know, he's a great uh, martyr and example for all of us, especially of zeal, you know, and of love for the Lord. And so, uh, you know, all of us, you know, uh, yeah, you know, life, life is hard. Evangelizing is difficult, you know, but, but trust in the Lord. You know, think, think about what has been given to us. You know, what St. Saint, Saint Paul told St. Timothy, God did not give us a spirit of, of cowardice, of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So ask the Holy Spirit. You know, if, if, you're, if you're feeling any kind of discouragement, you're feeling down, ask the Holy Spirit to stir it up. Stir it up. You know, come, Holy Spirit, come. Stir it up. You know, and, and in stirring up, you know, then we, we can look to reading the lives of the saints, thinking about Jesus. You know, even talking to friends, you know, holy people. You know, this, this helps stir, stirs into flame, you know. Makes us burning hot with zeal for the Lord and, and doing his work. And so the, this, this we can do and, and we need to do. We're called to do. This is what holy people do. So, again, we look to Jesus. Let nothing hold you back. But as St. Paul says, be unstoppable, always doing the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. God bless you all.